Hello, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the interview shows on the Boudoir Guild. We need to come up with a name for this. And I can't think of a better person to struggle with the mechanics of this show with than my good friend Maddie here. If you've seen any videos on this YouTube channel, which... I hope you have so far. There's been a team behind me who's helped me put all these together, come up with all of the content ideas to help me with all of the editing, to do all my scheduling, all the structure work that I'm not good at. And honestly, I don't really want to do. I would rather talk about the content and share my knowledge and engage with other photographers and make all that magic happen. So the, dare I say, ringleader who like keeps me aligned and keeps me focused and headed in the right direction is joining us today. Uh, welcome to the show, Maddie. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be here. And also, you know, Mike makes my job so easy. So it, it really is a little bit unfair. And if you do watch the videos, if you don't like any of them, we definitely didn't do them. But if you like <laughs> them, then we did them. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mike Lloyd. I've been a professional photographer in Silicon Valley, California for 12 years, teaching photography for 10 years. And I teach the art and business, which is my favorite part. Not true. I like it all. But it's just a really expensive hobby if you don't learn how to run a business. And one of the, the things that we don't talk about a whole lot in the artist world is the concept of being okay with charging money. I mean, obviously some of us do because we enjoy, you know, owning a home and like going on vacations and eating food, but getting over these, these mindset perceived shortcomings and learning to trust other people with your baby also, which was like the hardest thing for me was outsourcing things. I held on to everything for the longest time. I wanted to do all of it myself and I knew others who had teams around them. And I didn't think it was cheating. I didn't look down on them for it, but I wanted to be the superhero rock star badass who did all the editing, all the planning, all the social media, all the writing, all the everything. And I did that for a long time and totally burnt out and ran myself into the ground. And as soon as I started outsourcing things, I got to take days off, which was like a weird concept to me, relax, but also like things just ended up getting done better than I would have done them in the first place because I was being stretched so thin. And that's how uh, I got to work in with Maddie here to do this YouTube channel. And part of, of all of the outsourcing and the time management is finding a balance. And a lot of photographers are working a nine to five when they first get started. You know, you've got a full time job already that you want to leave and you can't just dedicate 40, 50, 60 hours a week to this new craft. If you can, awesome. I would say fast forward, but don't. You should watch all of this. But Maddie, you're doing that right now. You're launching a new podcast, which is such I a am. cool concept. You're also working uh, full time and you have, you know, a marriage and a family that you manage as well. So. And I'm pregnant. Yep. <laughs> There's, so, a, there's a couple things. Yeah. So how do you manage all that? Um, great question. I think the answer is I don't. And that's probably why we're here having this conversation. Okay. I can give you as much insight as I can. But then, I mean, that's why I love having conversations like these with really smart people like you. But it's been a long time of what you said, just not being able to outsource, not trusting people. And I think we both have similar personalities where we want to take it all upon ourselves and it's really hard to, to let go yeah. for sure. And I've learned that that leads to burnout, which is what you're talking about. And, um, it, it really, I think the key is surrounding yourself with a team of people that is smarter than you, that is better than you. hundred um, percent. And, and I think that's a win. Like, I don't think you're, you know, insignificant in any way. I think you're smarter for doing that. So there yeah. you have a lot of people in your business um, or in your life that are really good at specific things. And then you yourself are really good at specific things. And so you really need to find and hone into that one craft or that one skill. And then all the other things that you're adequate at, but maybe not 
you know, the best at, those are, it's okay to hand those things off. I was working at a nine to five job beforehand and, you know, I just didn't love it because I love the freedom and the flexibility to be uh, able to be a mom or to be a wife or to, I don't know, go to the grocery store when I want to. So I just think finding that balance and, and sometimes it is that nine to five job for people. And then at other times it is having that freedom, flexibility, that creativity. And sometimes I work better at weird hours. Right. We have the flexibility to do that, which is great. Uh, I'm also going grocery shopping as soon as we're done and it's new on a Tuesday. So I can do that without having to, you know, sneak out and hope my boss doesn't see me as long as everything gets done, which is a cool thing. But you're launching a podcast or you've launched a podcast already while you're working. How did you make the time to make the idea actually start to become a thing? Yeah, well, I mean, I am a creator. I just try to keep those juices going at all times. And we came up with this really good idea. Actually, we didn't come up with it. We went searching for it, right? We were searching for a sports parenting podcast. And what we found was it really didn't exist. And so it was an idea that we came up with. We we're like, well, let's, let's create it. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, I have the sports background. Uh, I co-host with my dad, who is a uh, broadcaster for the NBA. And he also played professionally for years. And then our other third member and host also played professionally and then raised two All-American athletes and all of that. So we we came together and we had this really cool idea. Basically, I was the person that could make it happen, right? Um, these guys are fantastic when it talks when it comes to talking and talking about sports parenting, but I don't know if they even know how to close their tabs. So um, yeah, so that's how it kind of started. And at first it was, and actually still now, it's a lot of just trying to find time because we do have full-time jobs. We do have families. We do have other responsibilities. But I think when you're passionate about something and you love it, you, you find the time, you make it work. You let everyone play the role that they are best suited to play. And so that's been helpful for us. And we're still figuring it out. We're still looking for people. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's business is, is always, you know, learning. It's always growing and trying to go in that upward direction. Yeah. So I think that's, that's where we're at right now with, you know, hopefully this becomes something where we can set aside more time. But when you don't have the money up front and you don't have, you know, that luxury at first, you kind of have to make it your side hustle. At least yep. that's my opinion. Agreed. I mean, it'd be swell if when I first got started, I could have hired video power marketing and my social media manager and my editor and everything, but it's already enough to support myself by myself in Silicon Valley with the cost of living out here. And then, you know, trying to build a business that I knew nothing about started small. But what I, what I wish I would have known early on, and because we didn't have YouTube channels like this, we didn't have podcasts available. We didn't have all the, the amazing online resources, boudoirguild.com that are available to photographers. Now I didn't know that I should hire myself out of the job as quickly as possible. If I would have known that, I could have taken some of my early revenues. And while I'm grateful for all of the travel that I've done, I could have maybe tabled one of those trips to Europe, used that, that money to then hire someone to help me grow the business faster. And then with the new revenue coming in, take a percentage of that money, invest it back into the business and continue to scale. And we'd be, you know, having this chat from my castle in France right now if, if I had done it that way. So... I don't regret any of my decisions. I love all the things that I've done with my life, but knowing what I know now, that's definitely what I would have done is just take any little bit that I could have and hired outside help to get this growing faster. But I've also hired people that did an absolute garbage job and it was just a giant waste of my time and my money. And I'm sure, you know, through VPM, you've heard horror stories of other people who've hired other agencies to do things for- definitely zero results how do you recommend that we start looking for somebody like what what do you look for in someone that you want to hire that's a great question um at our company we 
have three words that we uh, that that we hire based on, and it's hungry, humble, and smart. And uh, that doesn't mean the most incredible creative person ever, right? Which is interesting, but we really believe that if you're hungry, humble, and smart, then you are capable of being successful, helping us in our business. And we do hire based on personality too. Like we want to, we want to work with people like we work with Mike. Uh, we we want to work with people like you who we, we just gel with and, you know, we know it's going to work. Like we, we know there's some give and take. We know you're willing to go on the journey with us because I don't know if you guys know this, but YouTube organic, it's so fast moving. I'm kidding. It's a, it's so slow moving, you know, uh, there's, yeah. there's tons of, um, learning, there's tons of growth and you, you know, you see these upward curves that make you super excited, but sometimes you have these lulls. And so you kind of go back to the drawing board and you have to figure out, okay, this is working. This is not working. And the greatest thing about YouTube organic is you have metrics. So you can kind of figure out what it what it is that is working and not working and you don't have to it's not a total guessing game but it is a little bit of a guessing game yeah i think that's that's the main thing um but i also have a question for you because i think this is the hardest thing for me is especially with the podcast like hiring like i don't want to because we're not making any money right now it is so hard for me to want to spend money on people like we don't have any i run our social which is not great because I don't have time. Like, right. This is something that we're having a problem with. Yeah. Um, but I would love someone to come in and run our social or, you know, like I'd love to hire, you know, an editor full time, but right now I do the editing and all of that stuff. So there, it's just so hard because I want to let go. And I know I'm saying these things cause I, I, you know, at VPM, yes, I have a whole team surrounding me with the podcast. This is probably why Mike brought me on. I'm not doing these things that I probably should be doing. Yeah. But I guess what is your like how I know you kind of you got kind of touched on it, but how can I give up that just anxiety, I guess, or stress when it comes to money that we don't have? Yeah. And that's why I wanted to have you on this show, because you're on both sides. Yep. You're on the team that does it for other people and you're starting a thing that you need a team to come on and do. So right. when I launched my podcast back in 2017, I put out openings for uh, internships for every local school and you could do it nationally or internationally whatever for anyone in like the audio visual world video editing audio editing sound engineering any of that and there's websites where you can go on and it's like like a monster.com or an indeed but it's just for college internships Mm -hmm. and you upload your job description whether it's paid or unpaid and check with your states labor laws to find out what constitutes an unpaid internship because that I I had to be very, very careful in what I asked her to do and what, what we did uh, in order to stay legal, even just to protect myself from future lawsuits. If anyone were to come back, you know, five years from now, I don't know what the statute of limitations is, but, but that's just the point I wanted to protect myself. So I researched that posted the interview or posted the job openings essentially. And then I interviewed the people who hired and I, I didn't know at the time, but humble, hungry, smart is what I looked for. And she never wanted to be in front of a camera. She's like, if I could just stay in a dark basement, never see humans and just edit things, that would be the best life I could hope for. I never want to touch a camera. I never want to talk to people. Just give me all the snippets and let me put things together. And I'm like, that's ideal because yeah. I don't want someone to come in and like creatively re-edit my show and change the way things are. Right. Um, I mean, if you have ideas, amazing, you know, run them by me first, but I just wanted an editor. And so, I mean, we worked together for a year and it was regular check-ins. I provided software for her. I gave her all the tools she needed and helped her get set up and she would create show notes for the episodes, upload everything, You know, and I built out these systems and workflows that she could take with her. And I I even helped her get hired by other podcasters while and after we worked together. And she still works with them. And it's been, what, five years, which is pretty cool. So she's found a thing where she'll edit all the episodes, do the show notes, upload everything for you with all the links. And she got to be really good at that. So I didn't have to pay her. I got an intern to do it. And by the time 
you know, we got a hundred episodes in, I realized, you know, that was our year. And also I needed to change the business around. So I stopped doing the show, but that's why I didn't do anything else for, you know, four years until we started this channel because I knew working with somebody else, I didn't want to do any of those things. It just wouldn't get done. And I wasn't willing to sit there and edit audio and video because it took time away from things that were actually going to be generating revenue. And that was totally. my first priority. So that's how I got help. But also, you know, onlinejobs.ph, Fiverr, Upwork. Those right. are great places where you can find somebody overseas who will do all of your editing. And they're going to do a great job fast and usually, you know, relatively inexpensive compared to what we pay somebody stateside to do that. So. And I, I will say that we also use uh, overseas help with all of our editing and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And they are fantastic. They really are amazing. Um, yep. They do such a good job, right? But they're also just such good people too to work with. And that was going to bring me to my next point, which is I think communication is so, so important in business. Um, whether you're on the side of VPM, right? I have a whole team that I work with or the Blood, Sweat and Sports Parenting Podcast, which is, you know, me and three other people right now. The only way that you can be successful or continue in your success is through communication and making sure that everyone's on the same page. And through communication, that's where you, f you find out what people's strengths and weaknesses are and play to them. Yep. So I just think that that's a huge point. Like if you want to find balance as well, you got to communicate because I think a lot of times we get stuck and then, you know, it really is our fault at the end of the day because we're not telling people we need the help. We're just standing in our stubbornness right. and not allowing that to, you know, to be out in the open that we need, we need it. We need a community to surround us in that. Totally. One of the hard things too is knowing how you need to be supported. Cause we can say like, you have to communicate your needs, the goals of the project, whatever it is you're working on. But if you're just launching a podcast or a photography business, you probably have no idea what the things are that you actually need. And you're going to be winging a lot of it and figuring it out mm -hmm. as you go and head in this direction and then that direction and then doing a bunch of these and then who knows. So also having the humility to uh, recognize that, you know, you're going to change direction many, many times. And it's like being in a relationship when somebody's like, we need to have a talk. No one looks forward to hearing that from their partner. But if you have regular check-ins, save times where you can communicate things, then it alleviates a lot of that pressure. So mm -hmm. that's a big, a big thing also, you know, like with my editor, I outsource all my photo editing um, through the same company where VPM gets your editors and mm -hmm. she's amazing, you know, and I, I check in, is there anything I can do in my shoots to make editing easier? Is there a way I can position things? Should I move things? Like, what can I do to make things easier? And I'm always checking in with her. And I mean, we've changed our communication and workflow and the way that I upload the images to her, give her my editing notes for each shoot, the way we've established, you know, how long does she need for each of the sessions to edit? And when, how do I communicate the deadlines when I need everything back? So it, it took several months, but we have such a great system now. Like I do the shoot, I do my call, I upload everything. And I know that it's going to be delivered exactly as I need it before I need it. And then who knows what we'll do next, but it's only gotten better over time. So that wraps up the end of part one. Part two, we flipped the script a little bit. Uh, I should be prepared for this at this point, but Maddie decided she wanted to interview me for the rest of our conversation. And while we originally intended this to be like a half hour chat, it ended up going a full hour. That's why we're splitting it up into two parts. So stay tuned for part two.